But I'm still alive. Why did Queen Elizabeth ask the Archbishop of Canterbury to give her a push at her coronation? How did the monarch become a Bond girl? Good evening, Mr. Bond. And what hilarious hidden talent has she used to entertain guests? Isn't it good? Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joy and you're watching Ossa. I hope you've been practicing your curtsies because we're meeting up with the Queen. Okay, maybe the real queen isn't as comfortable shaking her booty as this deepfake is, but she's been known to let her hair down in other ways. The coronation was just the start of the comedy. There are some <clears throat> disadvantages to crowns, but, but otherwise they're quite important things. At her coronation in 1953, Elizabeth revealed herself to be the queen of a different kind, comedy. The ceremony required the future queen to wear ceremonial robes that weighed a ton, and though she'd practiced the entire ceremony beforehand at Westminster Abbey, she realized on the day that the carpets had been installed incorrectly. The fibers were all facing the wrong way. This caused some crazy friction between her robes and the floor, making walking pretty difficult. Instead of losing her cool, she simply asked for a little help from the Archbishop of Canterbury, but not in the way you might imagine. According to reports from the time, Elizabeth quietly leaned over and instructed the Archbishop to give her a push and help her on her way. Once she was officially queen, Elizabeth refused to let her sparkle be dulled and never missed a chance for a witty one-liner or a laugh, even while she was being interviewed. Don't believe me? This was her response when asked if she kept a diary. It's quite small. But you write I it can... in your own hand. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's... Yes, I think that's totally important. Hmm. Why well, can't write it now? In fact, the Queen often had a hard time keeping a straight face at many official events. For example, in the 1980s, at a diplomatic reception at the palace, the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher was feeling poorly and had to sit down before she fainted. When the Queen noticed this, she turned to one of her ladies in waiting and remarked, Oh, look, she's keeled over again. Also, in the 80s, while touring New Zealand, the Queen was attacked by protesters throwing eggs at her. When she was asked about this a few days later, she was totally unfazed and said, I myself prefer my New Zealand eggs for breakfast. What a legend! When politics is an excuse to poke fun It seems as though being the Queen of England has given Elizabeth some comedic confidence, because she is not afraid to poke fun at herself or other world leaders. In 2007, during a visit to the White House, the Queen was stunned to hear President George W. Bush mention that she helped Americans celebrate their bicentennial in 1776 instead of in 1996. Even though he immediately apologized and corrected himself, the Queen teased him during a dinner later that week, when she started her speech by saying, I wondered whether I should start this toast by saying, when I was here in 1776. Never mind a toast. That's a roast. And speaking of American presidents, they seem to be one of the Queen's favorite targets. Sounds like President Trump. President <laughs> Obama. Oh, I bet Trump didn't see that one coming. During a dinner in 2015, the Queen was introduced by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who recounted her long and successful 63-year reign. When it came her time to speak, she opened by commenting on his speech. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, for making me feel so old. But that doesn't mean she has a problem with aging. On the contrary, she regularly uses references to her age as an icebreaker. Are you well? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm still alive. And while she has certainly had a long career, the Queen has revealed that it has a major downside. The crown. You have to keep your head very still. Yes. And you can't look down to read the speech. You have to take the speech up. Because if you did, your neck would break. It would fall off. But then again, not everyone is impressed by titles and crowns. Just ask the Queen's dogs. You're not supposed to do that. I won't hear. Go away. I'm not here. Go, go and do your stuff. Also, it turns out that ponies don't care about royal titles either. <laughs> I guess it's true. You can't impress everyone. Keeping it in the family. One of the most frustrating things about the royals is that they're a family and a business, and that's the main reason that they're always on their best behavior. But sometimes the line between family and duty becomes a little blurry. Your Majesty, Mummy. Thankfully for us, the Queen's family also likes to poke fun at the dual roles of the royal family. In 2005, Prince Philip attempted to prank the Queen by dressing up as one of Buckingham Palace's guards, but the Queen spotted him right away and could not keep a straight face while walking past her husband. 
It took several years, but Elizabeth managed to return the favor in 2019, when the couple was celebrating their 72nd wedding anniversary. During a public engagement, the monarch pretended to have forgotten the date, giving Philip a sneaky look before loudly asking the event organizer, what's the date? And laughing. The Duke has the solution. Stop it. With the few times she's made us laugh while speaking in an official capacity, we can only imagine what the Queen is really like away from the limelight. Thankfully, we have a clue. Prince Harry once admitted that the Queen and the rest of his family are pretty funny, explaining, My family is the same as any other family when it comes to humor behind closed doors. In fact, the prince and his grandmother have a special relationship, and he even managed to get her on board for a hilarious promo for his 2016 Invictus Games. Message. Yeah, the Remember when you told us to bring it at the Invictus Games? Be careful what you wish for. Boom. Oh, really? Please. Boom. But Harry is also behind one of the most surprising things about the Queen, her love of joke gifts. Apparently, the monarch encourages the family to get each other gag gifts instead of traditional Christmas presents, and one of her favorite gifts to date was a singing hamster she received from Meghan Markle. Bringing comedy to cultural affairs One of the more fun aspects of royal life is probably the fact that you get to attend and host all kinds of cultural events. In fact, the Queen attends the Royal Variety Performance every year, an event that showcases the best music talent across the world in order to raise funds for charity. While she's a fan of music, Elizabeth has a very specific taste in music. And that doesn't include the Everly Brothers. In 1960, when the musical duo performed their hit called Caddy's Clown, the Queen was asked what she thought. Her response? They sound like two cats being strangled. But that's nothing. She'd never even heard of Eric Clapton. When she met the musician at a Buckingham Palace event in 2005, she asked him, Have you been playing a long time? Thankfully, he wasn't put out by her ignorance and confirmed, oh, it must be 45 years now. Can you believe there's more? The Queen of England didn't recognize the Queen of Pop. Did you notice her mouthing the word who when Elizabeth met Madonna? She had no idea who the singer was and had to ask for clarity. At least Madonna didn't mind if that smile is anything to go by. She may have a somewhat dated taste in music, but when it comes to fine arts, Elizabeth is in her element. But she does still draw the line at nudity. In the 1990s, she attended an exhibition by the famous painter Lucian Freud featuring several lounging naked ladies. However, the monarch was careful not to have her picture taken and told her aides that under no circumstances was she to be photographed between a pair of those great thighs. When one of the press who heard this remark asked her if she'd ever had her portrait painted by the artist, she smiled and replied, yes, but not like that. In fact, her painting looked like this. And just as she knows how best to pose for a portrait, she also knows how to put her best foot forward in a photo shoot. So when Vogue photographer Annie Lebowitz tried to direct the Queen during a shoot, it didn't end well. I think it will look better without the crown. Less dressy, because the, the garter robe is so extraordinary. Dress what do you think this is? <laughs> but in all honesty, the Queen is no stranger to cameras. Her royal duties often require her to film addresses to the nation, but in 2012, she surprised Britons and fans of the royals across the globe by appearing in a totally unexpected role alongside Daniel Craig. Mr. Bond, Your Majesty. That's right, the Queen is also a Bond girl. Good evening, Mr. Bond and a natural actress. Did you know that she did this scene unscripted and actually improvised, ignoring Mr. Bond? If you look carefully, you'll see her smiling. Apparently, she very nearly ruined the shot by bursting into giggles. She's also proved to be a fan favorite, as her clip with Bond has been viewed over 12 million times. Later, when she used her royal status for the ultimate fan treatment and visited the set of Game of Thrones, she had no problem laying down the law despite not being on the Iron Throne. In In fact, as Kit Harrington explained, she actually refused to sit in it. They asked her they kept trying to push her to sit down on the throne, <laughs> and we kept getting told the same thing, which is she's not allowed to sit on other thrones, fictional or otherwise. And then they asked her if she wanted to sit on the throne, and she said, looks very uncomfortable. And though she couldn't have her moment on the Iron Throne, she did get to take home a miniature replica, which is pretty darn epic. But not as epic as the Queen's hidden talent. 
Did you know that the head of the royal family is actually amazing at mimicking and impressions? According to her chaplain, the queen imitating the Concorde landing is one of the funniest things you could see. And while we really do wish we could see that, it's sadly not possible. Instead, I'll leave you with proof that Queen Elizabeth's antics are genetic. Don't believe me? Then here's Prince Charles proving me right. <laughs> Wondering what on earth it's going to say. <laughs> oh, no! You're welcome. For more royal news, check out our other videos, and until next time, stay awesome.